Welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. You are watching the campus television channel of Don Bosco College, Kottiyam. This lecture is on the prescribed syllabus of 5th semester BA English Literature and Language. Paper is Literary Criticism. In this lecture, I am going to deal with John Dryden. This is part 1 of the lecture on John Dryden. John Dryden, birth year is 1631 and death year is 1700. John Dryden occupies an exalted position in the galaxy of English critics. He was such an influential personality that the period 1660 to 1700 is rightly called the age of Dryden. He was a poet, dramatist, translator, critic, all rolled in one. Dr. Samuel Johnson called John Dryden the father of English criticism. He was the first English critic to take criticism as an important branch of literature and make it systematic. T.S. Eliot echoed that Dryden was positively the first master of English criticism. The English criticism evolved from Dryden. His chief endeavour was to delight the age in which he lived. Essentially, Dryden was a prefatory man even as Bernard Shaw would become later. Here prefatory means introductory or preliminary. Much of his criticism is found in his prefaces. For justifying his own works, he had to indulge in an analysis of his own work which can be called self-criticism. Dryden uses the term examine for critical analysis and this term was originally used by the French playwright Corneille. His only formal work of criticism is Essay on Dramatic Poesy. Then there are the prefaces, epilogues, and letters which he prefixed to his poetic and dramatic works like Essay on Satire, Essay on Heroic Tragedy, Preface to Fables, etc. Dryden was a liberal neoclassical critic. While most Augustan writers became blind admirers of the French neoclassists, Dryden took a different line. He was a classist by taste and was equally at home in Greek and Roman classics. However, he had an open mind in many matters. Dryden justified violation of unities as it results in variety and richness of plot. He defended tragic comedy. He preferred irregular English plays to the regular French plays. He stated that the aim of poetry is to delight. Instruction is only secondary. He also went against Aristotle by preferring epic to tragedy. He was the pioneer of historical criticism for he recognized that literature is not static and different ages have different literary conventions. He was also the pioneer of comparative criticism as he compared the merits and demerits of English and French plays. Dryden stands out prominently as the champion of liberal classism in an age steeped in the criticism derived from Beaulieu and other French critics. Dryden as a, had the boldness to write according to his own convictions without regard for the rules laid down for good writing. He cleared the ground for himself with regard to freedom of composition and freedom of judgment. He refused to be bowed down by the French playwrights and critics. He refused to pay servile homage even to Aristotle. The most impressive qualities of Dryden as a critic are his breadth of view, his skill at comparison, his sense of changing artistic conventions, 
his richness to hear new evidence and if necessary change his mind his concern with the practical questions of craftsmanship his uncommon sense and his gentle manly tone now the work essay on dramatic poesy which was published in the year 1668 is a very important work written by john dryden and the aim behind writing this essay on dramatic poesy was to vindicate the honor of our english writers from the censure of those who unjustly prefer the french before them here to vindicate means to uh, clear from an accusation or to justify so that is uh, to justify or clear from that accusation uh, uh, in order to vindicate the honor of our english writers from the censure of censure means act of blaming criticizing so he is trying to honor our english writers from this act of blaming censure of uh, those who are unjustly preferring the french before them so clear so the occasion for writing this essay on dramatic poesy next we are talking about the occasion of writing this essay on dramatic poesy by uh, john dryden the occasion is in 1663 in the year 1663 a french man named samuel zorbeer visited england and wrote unfavorably on english science and stage okay so in the year 1663 a french man named samuel zorbeer visited english and wrote unfavorably on english science and stage the historian of the english royal society thomas spratt wrote a reply soon dryden wrote essay on dramatic poesy in the form of a conversation where four characters discussed the relative merits and guiding principles of the classical drama of greece and rome the modern dramas the neoclassical french drama and the romantic drama of the english okay the important issues like observance of classical unities the use of rhyme verse the use of blank verse as appropriate medium for the drama are also dealt with the most important and widely anthologized piece an essay on dramatic poesy is the comprehensive of his literary works it is lively as an essay for the light conversational opening and humorous ending on the occasion of a naval victory of the english over dutch there is an exchange among the four characters that is interlocutors interlocutor means a person who takes part in dialogue or conversation the essay had a topical interest for the characters were real people and all men of letters and dryden's contemporaries these were first identified in 1800 by the englishman edward melon therefore remember that the occasion for writing essay on dramatic poesy that is different from the occasion that is within the essay uh, that is the occasion of a naval victory of english over dutch so this occasion is within the essay within the essay there is an occasion uh, of this naval victory of the english over dutch at that time the uh, discussion or the um, exchange of uh, uh, thoughts takes place among the four characters or the interlocutors this occasion is different from the earlier one which we talked about that is the occasion for writing essay on dramatic poesy and what is that occasion that is in the year 1663 a french man named samuel zorbery 
uh, oh, sorry, Samuel Zorbier visited England and wrote unfavorably on the English science uh, and stage. And in reply for uh, of this, uh, the historian of the English Royal Society, that is Thomas Spratt, he wrote uh, something on uh, in reply to this. Soon Dryden wrote this essay on dramatic poesy. Okay, that is in the form of a conversation where four characters they discuss the relative merits and the guiding principles and all that we talked about earlier. Now, let us talk about the four characters or four interlocutors uh, mentioned in the work uh, essay on dramatic poesy written by John Dryden. First is Lysidius. Lysidius uh, represents Charles Sedley. And uh, Lysidius stands for the superiority of French place. He upheld the three unities and the use of rhyme. The English plays are not true to nature. By making a play delightful, they make it ridiculous. This is about the first character. Second character, Kreitz. Kreitz uh, represents Sir Robert Howard who is Dryden's brother-in-law. He stands for uh, ancients and expounds the extreme classical views. Expounds means uh, to explain. Uh, expounds the extreme classical view. Okay. He maintained the superiority of the ancients and attacks rhyme violently. Third character, Eugenius. Eugenius represents Charles Sackville or Lord Berkhurst, who stands for the moderns who have the advantage of experience. Moderns added many new features to poetry. He argues that ancient plays neither delight nor instruct. Fourth character Neander. Neander represents John Dryden himself, Greek for new man and Anagram for Dryden. Anagram is a word or phrase that is created by rearranging the uh, letters of another word. Okay. Advocated the superiority of English over French and the ancients. Okay. So, this character he advocated the superiority of English over French and the ancient. The English plays display a richness of humor. French plays lack variety. The English plots are copious and varied. Copious means vast in quantity or abundant. And also he says that they are varied. Short speeches and replies are more likely to move passionate. Wit and repartee are the chief graces of comedy. Repartee means witty reply, especially that is amusing. Okay, so uh, what he says is wit and repartee are the chief graces of comedy. Large numbers of characters and more violence on the stage suit the English audience. So these are the four characters: Lysidius, Crites, Eugenius, Neander. Lysidius is representing Charles Sedley. Crites represents Sir Robert Howard, who's Dryden's brother-in-law. Eugenius represents Charles Sackville or Lord Berkhurst and Neander represents John Dryden himself. So, remember this, this is very important. In this lecture, we studied John Dryden and the important work written by him, Essay on Dramatic Poesy. Do the given exercise and submit on time. Thank you.